Hello, everyone. Great to be here. This is what happens when you ask generative AI to make your title more exciting. Um, but this is kind of what we're going to talk about. So we want to make some plugins for Copilot. Um, and specifically, the bit I find really interesting is the Copilot chat. So really what we're talking about is, OK, how do we actually do that? How do we do plugins with Copilot chat? How can we do it easily? Um, and then I, I, we are going to do something on the call that I think is actually genuinely quite interesting and quite useful. So uh, if you were at Build um, or you attended any of the sessions, yep, there was some Copilot stuff. So if you're a pro code developer coming into this, this is the slide you go to and you're like, I don't even know where to start. OK, now the thing about build that you need to remember is that it is Microsoft's big opportunity to tell you all the things they've done and all the things they're doing and also what you can do right now. But all of that stuff kind of comes in one go. Right. So looking across here, this is how it's going to look. Um, but some of these things you can't do today and some you can. So I want to focus in on what you can do literally this afternoon if you wanted to. So. Um, Declarative co-pilots are going to be amazing when they come, but they're currently in private preview. So that makes choosing off this slide quite a lot easier. Uh, custom engine co-pilots, very, very cool as well. Actually, the stuff Simon just talked about, um, it's that, but in co-pilot chat, it's going to be amazing. Uh, coming soon to co-pilots, so that's good. So now we're down to graph connectors and plugins. And now it's so much easier because we know what graph connectors are. We don't think it's that. Plugins. It's a thing called plugins. We're going to use it to make plugins. OK, great. So within that, what do we need to do? Well, today you can create plugins from SQ extensions. That's the thing that Bob just showed. Now, we're going to do that, but we're not. We're going to do something that's not quite as uh, involved. Um, but we're going to use that because the other things. So when you're doing message extensions, Microsoft Teams message extensions, I'll show you in a minute. They are search based commands. OK. As in, you give it some information, it does some searching, and we'll cover what that is in a minute, and give you back some results uh, into something you can add into a message or now something that Copilot can use. Come into that. Coming soon are action commands. So these are things um, a bit like search based commands, except they're more designed to take actions. So they won't necessarily always return information. Maybe you won't need to provide search things to them. They're coming soon. And then also what is going to be very exciting is the ability to create plugins directly from open API specifications. That's in private preview. So today we're going to look at this top option. All right. So Copilot can read your emails. We can make a manifesto of how email should look. We can push the two together. So let's do it. And let's do it using messaging extensions. So Teams Toolkit. Yay. Let's do that. Let's use a Teams Toolkit. Let's create a new app. Um, we're going to go and create a messaging extension. OK. Um, and we're going to use the custom search results one and we're going to start with a bot. These other things are cool. The one we're going to use is start with a bot and we're going to do JavaScript. We're going to, that'll fine. And let's call this the, um, we need to call demo. Okay. It's going to go and build it and you can do this later. Um, you can, when you're looking at the recording, you can do this. Uh, and it wants to do a couple of cool things and it says here, uh, that you can run this. You can debug it in your test tool. You can, uh, I was waiting for the screenshot to load. It's like, why isn't it loading? Because it's so slow because it's 4G. Um, right. It really wants to use the Teams uh, app test tool, which is a really good idea. So we're going to do that. So I'll hit debug and debug it in the test tool. And what that's going to do is give it a build. And whilst it's building, I'm just going to quickly show you what we've got here. And then I'll show you what it looks like in the test tool. The test tool is great, by the way. It's a new thing for, um, making it really easy to do some of these things. And it means you don't have to like push it all on to, to Teams as well. Um, there is one thing I didn't quite think through, which is it's probably going to want to download a bunch of stuff, but maybe uh, MPN will be all right with that. But if not, we'll cut to uh, a version I've already built, but we'll see how well this build process works over 4G. But in the meantime, I want to show you a couple of things. So we've got an adaptive card here. Okay, it's fairly basic. Look, it's just got the title and it's got a description. Hey, Tom, and could you just uh, increase the, the font size a little bit there just so it's easier yeah, for can. everybody to read? Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course I can. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to stop because it's going to load. I just want to show you what it does straight out of the bat, first of all. Um, so we can go here. We can go search command. And just this is just as it's come out, completely as it's come out of test toolkit. So if we do some searching for something, it's going to search the um, like the NPM repository uh, very slowly and very deliberately and bring back some information in a minute. There we go. 
And when I choose one, it will make a nice card. Okay, so that's great, but we can do better. Okay, and that's all that this uh, this code is doing right now. So if I look at this code here, I can see that's exactly what it's doing. So let's make some changes. So let's take this out. Uh, let's take out this response because we don't really care about doing that. This is the thing that builds up the card here. We want to keep the card, but we don't really need to like look through and do like a big for loop through the responses. I'm going to completely cheat here and put in the name. I'm going to put like your communication manifesto, okay, which is what we're going to call it. And in the description, we are just going to literally write out what our manifesto is going to be. Um, and you can choose whatever you want in here in the interest of time, because we don't have much left. I'm just going to put in a couple of things. So things that I want to do to make nice email. OK, and I'm going to put it in here as well. All right, so that's kind of like, I think, a fairly good start. Let's go back and see if that works. Um, all right, so now it doesn't really matter what we put in here because we actually stopped using that. Um, it's always going to always return our communication manifesto, okay? Which by itself doesn't look very interesting um, and isn't a great messaging extension. So if we're not doing what Bob is doing, which is to create oh, the, the solution that Bob showed off, which is a messaging extension and a Copilot chat. We're just here for the for the plugin because actually Copilot doesn't really care what this looks like, right? So. Now that we've done that, the other really important thing we need to do um, with this stuff is tell Copilot um, all about our app because we need to tell it that it has the communication manifesto and we do all of that in the manifest. So here's the manifest uh, as it comes straight out of the um, sample. We're just going to make a couple of changes in here um, and it's really just about titling and things like that. So we'll go through here and we'll give it like a nice title. Uh, but what's really, really important are things like the descriptions. So like the descriptions have to, like they get read by Copilot. This is how Copilot understands whether to use your co your plugin or someone else's plugin, right? So this is super important. So in things like the description, make sure you put like really long things, communicate more than you think you need to um, around how your plugin is going to work, right? Um, and then when you come down to things like the command, now we're not actually using this command, but because it's a search um, based messaging extension, we do actually have to have one. Um, and so uh, we're going to put it in and that's fine. We um, we have to have this. This tells, uh, again, it's about putting in the descriptions, telling Copilot why it would want to do this and what it does. This is the command that retrieves my manifest, right? Um, and then it takes these parameters, or it takes one parameter. Again, we're not using it, but let's say we were using it. Um, and we could maybe build this out later, we, because what we could do actually is have different types of manifesto for different types of communication. So you could say in the description, again, being super verbose for Copilot about what we're doing. This is the communication type. These are your acceptable values. This is what works. OK, so we could do something like this. All right. At this point, I could save this. I could go back to the Teams toolkit. I could provision, deploy and publish and we'd all run out of time. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I am going to do is say that um, I have published this. I've done it and it's running over here. Now, this is. One of the problems with this is I really want to show you this working, but it only really works really well with like real data. But then I also have to make sure I don't lose my job. So um, this is the kind of like Teams web interface, but like I've hidden the uh, the chat bar on the left, um, which I'm hoping is going to be OK. Right. So let's move you out of the way. Um, OK, so let's just do that then. So we can say, what is my communication manifesto for email? OK, and it's going to think about it for a bit. And then hopefully it'll come up. And this is kind of our test case because what it should be doing is pulling out back to the um, the plugin and it should be bringing back my manifesto. OK, and hopefully. Yeah. So you can see it's brought back the this is almost like the citation in this case, really, like it's like the adaptive card. So it's got that and it knows that. All right. So now you can say things like, OK, based on the emails I sent last week, do you think they gem demonstrate good qualities? Right. I'm going to move this over here because sometimes these work really well and I will show you. And sometimes they work really well, but they leak all sorts of sensitive information, in which case I'm going to show you a picture instead of one I did the other day that worked really well, but I've redacted some of the information. 
I do want to show you it for real if I can, um, but this is kind of the problem with non-deterministic de um, co-pilots. So we'll see what it says. All right. Um, okay, well, happily, mm, happily badly. Um, okay, so let's have, I'll show you what it says. Uh, it actually says, in truth, I can't find anything that was very good about your emails, um, which is not very nice. I'll show you a screenshot in a minute, but well, let's try the opposite, right? Let's say... Find me uh, examples of emails that don't meet any of these qualities, okay? Which is always more fun, um, but again, uh, at risk of... Uh, whilst it's waiting, I'm going to show you one I did yesterday. Exactly the same question, okay? Don't meet these. And this I thought was really interesting because if you read through what it's done, um, it actually does kind of a really good job. Um, it's saying like, look, this was kind, but it maybe it was you know not great this be honest one true story that was exactly the conversation we had um before i sent that email we had an internal conversation around the fact that um he was worried about how many slides there were and we were going to be fine with it because we had done presentations before and then i wrote the email and that's what it called out which i thought was really interesting um and then a couple of others and they're all really good like honestly they are um they're they're, they're fair criticisms i would say um and that is done sort of super easily like in very very few lines of code it's not even really a sample right it's so simple to put together um it's a uh, it's something you can do kind of today really quickly and use it to um just kind of see how you're interpreting emails see how your emails are being seen and you can do it on incoming emails if you really want to as well but i find it really useful for sent emails um you can expand it out to teams chats you can do all sorts of things with it so if that sounds interesting, I've got the whole process like written up in a blog post. Hopefully um, the link will be in the chat. If not, I'll put it on in a minute. Um, thank you very much for bearing with me. Sorry about the internet. No idea what happened. Our local community Facebook chat has gone bananas. Um, so thanks very much.